And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Alex Steele. We're counting you down to the closing bell. And here to all take us beyond the bell, it's a global simulcast. With Scarlet Fu here in the TV studio, Carol Masser and Tim Stenovic reunited in the radio booth. Welcome to our audiences across all of oh, our Bloomberg singing. platforms. She's singing, guys. Radio, <laughs> TV, <laughs> YouTube, we're all reunited. and apparently now we're also on <laughs> might, Spotify. Might have been our last yeah, simulcast so, after that. I don't know. Uh-oh, they're coming in. They're like, uh, Carol, could you come here, please? Um, yeah, are we going to get another record, guys? I don't know. We're fading a little bit, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, we're fading a lot, right? It feels like from where we were earlier, it feels like, I don't know, uh, are we just getting a little tired, quite a run up uh, this year or just waiting for NVIDIA? Again, uh, we're always uh, waiting for something. I mean, I, Abigail was in here earlier and she said just the past few days, everybody's been waiting for NVIDIA. Just such little volume, um, such little action, small moves, Scarlet. Everybody's just waiting for Wednesday. Everyone's just waiting for Wednesday. But let's not forget that either we're at record highs or at or near record highs, and it's not just for U.S. stocks. You also have the MSCI All Country World Index set to close at a high if it does end up positive. Gold and copper at record highs. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of money being put to work. There's a lot of liquidity out there. Frankly. I took pictures of some guy on um, 59th Street with like these huge copper pipes, <laughs> and I took a picture. I said, "I'm not taking you. I just want to take the copper pipes because copper is really expensive." And he looked at me like, "Go away, little girl. Just go away." <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to say about both of those two things, but instead, I will talk about Norwegian Cruise. Uh, but talk about, you know, stocks that are doing well. I mean, it boosted its adjusted earnings per share forecast for the full year. It's relifting its peers. Again, not just tech. All right, we're getting the closing bells uh, here in New York. A mixed bag all around with the Dow Jones Industrial Average losing uh, roughly about 200 points uh, on the day. That's a loss of about five tenths of a percent here. Interesting moves here in the S&P 500. It takes some time for these numbers to settle, but we should point out the record high from last week uh, was at that right around that 5308 level, and it looks like we did break that here today. So 5308.24 it looks like is, like is where we are going to settle at, and that would be a record high, but only by about, I think, less than a point or so. It's up about five points on the day, a tenth of a percent higher on the day. The Nasdaq composite up more than 100 points or seven tenths of a percent to a fresh record high, as is the Nasdaq 100 and the Russell 2000. Modest gains here on the day, up about seven points or three tenths of a percent. All right, Romain, and just kind of an even split if you look at the S&P 500, you've got about 213 names gaining some ground on this Monday session, 286 to the downside. So a little bit of a more down tone, if you will. And we've got Scarlet for Unchanged. Yeah, I've lost track of the number of record highs uh, the S&P 500 has set this year. I um, think this is 24. 24? Yeah. Can I just okay. point out the record high, I just wanted to double check, was 5308.15. We closed at 5308.20. Just by a hair. Hey, so, I don't know if you bought a hat for that, but that would, no, that would, be, impre that would be impressive if you. I would just need post-it notes for the last two, you know, numbers after the decimal sure point. Would. <laughs> 100% true. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the sector movers here because um, a pretty mixed day when you look at uh, how many sectors finish in the green versus how many in the red. Let's start with uh, the gainers since we did close at a record high. Infotech, and that's really uh, Jable that leads the way there. 1.3% higher communication services also gaining, but just by a third of a percent. Industrials also finishing in the green. On the downside, J.P. Morgan dragging the financials lower, consumer discretionary, and real estate investment trusts losing about two-thirds to three-quarters of 1%. All right, guys, let's get to some of the individual gainers. And you've got uh, number one gainer in the S&P 500, Norwegian Cruise, um, and also kind of lifting the overall group. Uh, Norwegian coming out, raising its full-year profit outlook for the second time this month while also updating its midterm strategic vision. Um, the cruise industry, we've known unprecedented demand this year. Royal Caribbean and Carnival also reporting record booking le levels. So really the whole group was on fire today. Norwegian up about 7.5%. Carnival, by the way, up about 7.3%. All right, I'm sure you guys talked about this story. I'm guessing you did. Hims and Hers <laughs> Health, a name that had never been really on my radar, um, but this one finishing um, off its highs. It was up 38% at its best levels of the day. 27% though at the close here. This is a company that basically is offering uh, a similar treatment with the same active ingredient, ingredient as Wegovy, but for $199 a month. It has to do with compounding and when there's a short supply, which there are of these diet drugs, they are able to kind of create something very similar. Don't, don't give away the whole story because we're supposed to talk about this in a few minutes. Okay, I'm not going to give it away. Please. But anyway, an outperformer in a big way. NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday. This one, an outperformer today, folks, up 2.3%. percent sorry, well, what's the whole story? Uh, now I'm intrigued. You're going to have to wait, You're going to have to wait, Romain. That's called a tease. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. NVIDIA up 2.3%. percent got earnings on Wednesday. Barclays increasing its price target on the stock. The broker saying it sees more upside for data center revenue compared to current estimates. So, yep, we're all waiting for NVIDIA. 
Olivia and Scarlett mentioned J-Bill. It was up uh, about 5.5% in today's session, uh, topping the S&P 500 earlier. Uh, the manufacturing services company confirming its previously provided fiscal third quarter projections for profit and revenue. And it also named a new CEO, um, some changes in the C-suite. So also mentioned that uh, it completed an investigation related to corporate policies and saying it did not, that investigation did not impact financial statements or financial reporting. I'm done. Okay, the gainers. I got some decliners. I want to talk about J.P. Morgan Chase because it did trade to an all-time intraday high before actually falling more than 4% today. It fell 4.5%. The company came out and raised uh, its forecast for this year's net interest income. It is its biggest source of revenue. But then Jamie Dimon told shareholders that his retirement timetable is, quote, not five years anymore in response to a question about how long he planned to remain CEO. This all happened during the firm's investor day. He said that the bank is well on its way with its succession plans. He's been at the top job going all the way back to 2006. He's 68 years old. And earlier this year, he did move some of his top lieutenants into new senior roles. The idea is that it gives them more experiencing, experience running other parts of the firm as he prepares potential successors. Um, Ulta shares also falling today, down 3.3%. Ulta Beauty shares fell after Piper Sandler cut its price target on the retailer. Uh, Piper Sandler maintains an overweight rating on the stock. And I do want to end with Instacart here, down 4.4% today. It did slide as much as 6% earlier in the session after the company's CFO said at the JP Morgan Global Technology Media and Communications Conference that the company doesn't expect to exceed its gross transaction value guidance. She said the company's approach to GTV guidance is to try to provide its best projection of what's going to happen in the quarter. Uh, and she said that we're providing guidance that we do not expect to exceed, which of course disappointed investors. I just want to go back uh, real quickly to the S&P 500. We said yeah. it closed at a record high. We also say it takes a while for these numbers to settle. They have now settled, and it is not a record high. Oh. So we should just point oh. out 5308 oh. Remove the banner. was the record high from May 15th. <laughs> the official close today right now is 5308.13. So thank you, you for are, the are one of these people keeping score here. Scarlett, change your post-it. Yeah, that's because what I was going to say. That's why I have the post-it notes on the hat. But, but Take off the cap. We're joking, but we're, we're not actually, because no. she, she does have post-its where she puts things. This is I, I know this because I do the same thing. All right, let's get a quick check in here on yields. They were up. Uh, the 10-year yield is above uh, that 50-day uh, moving average. So that's kind of all you have to know. A little bit of selling there in the bond market, Scar. All right, we have Zoom video coming out with results. Uh, let's go with the first quarter adjusted EPS, $1.35, beating the consensus estimate of $1.19. Revenue slightly higher than anticipated, $1.14 billion versus $1.13 billion. Keep in mind that this is a small single-digit increase in revenue, and that has not happened, uh, this single-digit revenue increase uh, since fourth quarter of 2022. As for the outlook for this quarter, it sees second quarter revenue of $1.15 billion to, nope, that's a typo, so we'll come back to that. Second Second quarter adjusted EPS of $1.20 to $1.21. Analysts were looking for $1.24. So that outlook for second quarter EPS does fall short. Full year revenue, $4.61 billion to $4.62 billion. Previously you saw about $4.6 billion. Analysts were looking for $4.61 billion. That's a very narrow range. You, cool. you typically don't see that yeah. for these outlooks. I think you put a piece of cold cuts like in the middle of it. Like right. it's so thin. Hey, stock's down about 3.3% here in the aftermarket. So investors not liking it. Keep in mind, you know, Remain, it's down about 11% so far this year. You've got about 5% of the float shorted. But yeah. Investors not really loving what they've got here. All right. Uh, earnings out by Palo Alto Networks as well. The share is moving lower here in after hours trading. I'm going to start with the forecast. The company saying so sees fiscal fourth quarter revenue at 2.15 to 2.17. The top end of that range is the average of analyst estimates. So effectively, the company guiding a little bit light. As for the quarter that just passed, the company reported fiscal third quarter revenue of 2.0 billion. The street was looking for 1.97. So pretty much in line with estimates. And it looked like on the EPS side, it look, uh, I'm not seeing the comparison, but they reported $1.32 there. Uh, but again, it looks like the bigger news here is that the full year forecast, the fourth quarter forecast coming in just a little bit light. Shares down 8.6% as we speak. Uh, the company CFO saying that they've remained disciplined in execution while investing in go-to-market and innovation, delivering constant profitable growth yet again in the third quarter. And they look forward to executing against the strategic goals and financial targets as they close out the year. Uh, I just want to go back to Zoom for a moment. Um, so that company was talking about how they have about 191,000 enterprise customers. Uh, and they're really touting that. And I think that that's an important point to just... Uh, capitalize on because it missed estimates and that's where they're sort of putting all their money they don't really care if you 
if us, you, me, Carol, all wind up getting Zoom, they really need the corporate customers to do that like a meta did. Uh, mm -hmm. And it looks like that estimate missed. Right. My family chats on the weekend don't matter. Yeah, they don't really matter. want, you know, Bloomberg and everybody else <laughs> to be on Zoom. Um, all right. Compounding, by the way, just head to Bloomberg.com, Romaine, or the Bloomberg terminal. You can read that story, or maybe we'll talk about oh, it. Oh, you should have given it all the way because we ran out of time. Sorry. <laughs> I should have. All right, guys. Uh, watching Palo Alto down almost 7 percent and Zoom down about 1.7 percent. All right. That's a wrap. Our cross platform radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals, Beyond the Bell. We'll see you again, same time, same place tomorrow.